and all he's done for me. I just get excited about what he's already done. And the Bible says that our latter shall be greater than our former. And if I'm already excited, I just have no idea how excited I'm going to be in the latter days because they're going to be better than what I've already gone. Saul's servant 
and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all the Lord, my king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. God's word for God's people in God's time. For just a few scattered seconds today, I want to preach uh, from the subject, From Rags to Riches. From Rags to Riches. My brothers and sisters, there was a story told uh, during the World War era, the Great Depression, uh, about a mayor uh, by the name of Fiorello LaGuardia who was the mayor of New York City. And he was an unorthodox mayor. He would go around riding the public transportation, uh, just being anywhere that a mayor really shouldn't be. And on one night, it was cold and snowing, and uh, the mayor just ended up in night court at one of the poorest wards of New York City. And so Mayor LaGuardia dismissed the judge for the evening and took over the bench for himself. A few minutes on the docket, there was an old woman that was brought before him, charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She told a lawyer that the reason that she did it was because her daughter's husband had deserted her. Her daughter was sick and her two grandchildren were starving. Uh, but the shopkeeper from whom the bread was stolen refused to drop the charges. Uh, the, neighbor, the storekeeper said, it's a bad neighborhood, Your Honor, so she's got to be punished to teach everybody else a lesson. And so the warrior sighed and said to the woman, I do have to punish you. The law makes no exceptions. So he said to her, it's either $10 or 10 days in jail. But even as the mayor pronounced the sentence, he was already reaching into his pocket. Uh, he extracted a shiny $10 bill from his famous hat and said, here is the $10 fine, which I now remit. And furthermore, I'm going to find everyone in this courtroom 50 cents for living in a town where a person has to steal bread so that her grandchildren can eat. And so he instructs the bailiff, Mr. Bailiff, collect the fines from everybody and give them to the defendant. So the following day, the newspapers reported that $47.50 was turned over to a bewildered old lady to feed her starving grandchildren with 50 cents coming from the store owner who she stole the bread from. And all I'm trying to tell you is that when you're down to your last, when you can't see for living, God will take you from rags to riches. When you look around and you got more money left than you got money, when you look around and you got more work days than you got gas in your car to get there. Anybody ever been there? Anybody? When you look around and you got uh, to buy stuff for your children for school, but your bills say otherwise. When you can't see for looking and your change is strange and your credit won't get it, your money is looking funny. God will step in and make a way out of your way. Each and every time when we think that all hope is lost, God shows up right on time. And my mama used to say, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. May not come when you want him, but he be right there on time. And, and all I'm trying to tell you is that if you're in a raggedy situation right now, if, if you can just trust him through the tough times, if, if you can just get a praise break even in the broke times, if, if you can just praise him when you can't see 
for blinded eyes. Because if you praise him when it's rough, the word says that he lives within our praise. I wish somebody had helped me here. And if he lives in my praise, I believe that I promise I'll give you everything you need. I promise if you help me, I'll get out your way. So my brothers and sisters, here we find our, uh, in the text here, uh, a dude uh, who had been lame uh, from uh, a long time ago. And my brothers and sisters here, in David uh, begins to inquire uh, about anybody that's left over from the house of Saul. And see, my brothers and sisters, to understand this text, we really have to look back in 1 Samuel, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter number 20, uh, when David and Jonathan were having a talk. Because at this time, Saul had been seeking to kill David, because David had, the Bible says that Saul killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. And, and so the Lord had taken his favor away from Saul. And, and so Jonathan and David are having a discourse. And, and, and it's something with a little something like this. Uh, David, Jonathan said, David said to Jonathan, uh, uh, I, I, need you, I, I need you to understand that uh, your daddy wants to kill me. And, and this ain't something that's just in my head. I know he wants to kill me. But Jonathan says, no, no, you've done nothing wrong and, and you're not going to die. And, 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 and David says, no, no, bro, uh, your daddy is really trying to kill me. And, and so David makes a vow with Jonathan. And, and Jonathan tells David, as God of Israel is my witness, uh, by this time tomorrow, I'll see how my daddy feels about you. Uh, and then I'll let you know what I learned. And, and, and the Bible says that, uh, the Bible says that may God do his worst to me if I let you down. If my father intends to kill you, I'll tell you and I'll get you out of here in one piece. And he says that God be with you as he's been with my father. David says, though, if I make it alive, I'll continue to be your covenant friend. But Jonathan says, but if I die, keep the covenant friendship with my family forever. And what I want to show you here is three things in the text. Uh, the first thing we see here in the text is the inquiry. David says, is there any left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness? And see, my brothers and sisters, David had been battling and had been warring all up until this time. And so finally he had a chance to catch his breath. And isn't it good to know that after you get tired and you sit down for a little while, the Lord will bring some things to your remembrance. And I believe that as David sat down, he began to remember his brother Jonathan. For the Bible says that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And so David here inquires and says, is there any? Now understand, look, my brothers and sisters, he didn't set any criteria. You didn't have to look a certain way. You know how we do sometimes. David said, you don't have to have any fancy clothes. And you don't have to live in the fanciest gated community. David says, my love is representative of God's love for you and I. So I want you to come just as you are. Now watch, this was no easy task uh, for David to find someone from the house of Saul. For understand, my brothers and sisters, it was customary of that time that if there were any descendants of the previous king, that they would be sought and killed. Uh, this was to prevent anybody from trying to overthrow the new king and take the kingdom back by force. So, so, so Mephibosheth knows that there is a death warrant on his head. And my brothers and sisters, he goes into hiding. Uh, but not only did he go into hiding, he changed his name. So his original Hebrew name was Meribah. And so here now he's gone and changed his name and gone into deep hiding. What we would call this in modern times would be witness protection. And so I want you to understand that when David inquires of Mephibosheth, he inquires and when, when, when David says this, he puts out a big hunt to find him. And what I want you to understand that when God begins to inquire about your name, and when God begins to inquire about no, your, my name, there's nowhere that you can hide from God. David said, like, 
this in the 139th division of Psalm. He said, if I go into the heavens, you are there and can find me. He did. He did say, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that when God is looking to bless you, he wants to change you from rags to riches. And all you got to do is quit running away from what God is trying, what God is trying to take you. All you got to do is quit thinking you can hide all you got to do is come. The songwriter took pen to paper and put it like this. I came to Jesus as I was, weary, wounded, and sad, and I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I, I, I wish I had somebody to understand that when you came to God, you didn't have to get fixed up. I want you to understand that when you came to God, he took you just as you were. You didn't have to get dressed up in a fancy suit or a pretty dress. He don't care. So we see here the, the inquiry of David. The next thing I want you to see here that was in the text was the invitation. And so David has inquired of the house of Saul and asked him, said, is there any left for the house of Saul? And so Ziba, so servant Ziba said, there is a child by the name of Phibosheth, uh, whose name means shame destroyer or an image breaker. And so you understand something about this child, Mephibosheth, uh, during the time when Saul was killed, uh, and they were seeking to kill Jonathan and anybody of the house of Saul, in a haste to leave and hide the child, Mephibosheth was running and she dropped him and he became crippled. And my brothers and sisters, what I'm telling you here is that there are going to be some times in our lives where we will find ourselves in a crippled state. And it won't be because of anything that we have done. My brothers and sisters, understand that sometimes God has to cripple us to put the brakes on us. Sometimes we focus on where he's trying to lead us and end up heading in directions we don't even need to be going. And so my brothers and sisters, she drops him and he becomes lame in both of his feet. And he went to a place called Lodabar. My brothers and sisters, this place, uh, Lodabar, is this place called No Pasture. And in this place, there is no growth. In this place, there is no prosperity, no light, and no increase. I want you to understand that it was a town of forgotten people. In Lodabar, we find that there is the lost, unskilled, uneducated outcasts from society. They are the people that would be scorned, that people would pass by and pay them no attention. They would just become statistic on a government report. Um, you and I have at one point in time in our lives lived in Lodabar. See, we walk around with fancy cars and, and, and we walk around and drive fancy cars. We live in fancy houses and we have upscale jobs. But my brothers and sisters, on the inside, we are living in a place called Lodabar. See, these inhabitants of Lodabar were not there of their own fault. See, my brothers and sisters, understand many times we may end up in loaded bar, not because of something that we did. It's just somewhere that we have to go by. See, it wasn't the finisher's fault that his father died. It, it wasn't his fault that his nurse dropped him. It wasn't his fault that there was no doctor that could repair his situation. It was not his fault that he ended up in Lodabar. And what I want you to understand right now is that it's not your fault that you were molested. It's not your fault that you are raped. It's not your fault that you are bird, verbally abused or physically abused. It's not your fault that your daddy wasn't there. It's not your fault that your mother is a deadbeat mother. It's not your fault that you had to raise yourself. It's not your fault that you had to raise your parents instead of them raising you. It's not your fault that nobody ever gave you any kind of guidance. It's not your fault that you couldn't get a good education. It's not your fault that nobody ever
but if you just keep saying good morning, and if you just keep saying good evening, one of these days you might find yourself at Rota Bar, and you're going to wish somebody reach down and pick you up from the position that you're in. Quit putting your head up at somebody, because everybody has a past. You ain't up and dressed up and holy, high, mighty, and righteous. You ain't always been saved.
Uh, my brothers and sisters, he wants to restore your place at the king's table. Uh, he wants you to have more than you had before. He wants to pour out a double portion unto you. Uh, but the only way you're ever going to get it is to come humbly before his presence. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, if we don't humble ourselves, uh, we'll be in Lord of our for a long time. Uh, but if you just humble yourself before the Lord, uh, he will restore everything that was taken from you. Uh, I suddenly I feel like preaching. And so now, Mephibosheth is standing before David. And the Bible says uh, that David told Ziba, uh, therefore him and his sons, that you shall till the land. Yeah, you shall bring in the fruits. And his master's son shall have bread to eat at my table. I'm glad that he started out in a raggedy situation. Uh, he was uh, lame in his feet. But I'm glad that the Lord saw fit to come see about him. Say, yeah, uh, he came to David's house and he got back everything. If you don't believe that you can get it back based off of Mephibosheth, look back in your Bible. There was a boy by the name of Joseph. His brothers put him in a pit, told his daddy that he was dead. Oh, <laughs> 
what you want to be. And I want you to speak life into your situation. Nobody else can, nobody, I, I wouldn't let nobody speak anything negative into my life. And if somebody's speaking something negative into your life, you look them dead in their face and the devil is a liar. I don't receive what you're giving me. Well, you will have those people who, who don't want to see you get ahead, who don't want to see you prosper, who want to see you doing bad. Understand, everybody doesn't want to see your vision come to pass. That's why Joseph ended up in the pit and, 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 and he ended up in prison because they didn't want to see his vision come to pass. Everybody that's with you ain't, everybody that's saying they with you ain't with you. And understand that when you come from a rags to riches situation, when you get your riches, everybody ain't going to be happy you got them. Too many people are walking around and, and, and want to see somebody else doing bad. I want us all to come up. I want you to get your blessing. What God has been telling you that, that you're going to have, I want you to get it. Because number one, if he stops by your house, then I know he's in my neighborhood. And after a while, when it's my season, then he's going to stop by mine and give me what's going to be mine. You got to be patient and wait on your season, though. Worry about what somebody else got already. You don't know the hell they had to walk through to get there. And what they were able to withstand, it might take you out. So don't be blessed watching. Wait on yours. Because the narrative this morning says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It's funny how these two words went together this morning. And we didn't even plan it that way. But the prophecy of the promises of God will lead you from rags to riches. My God. Have you been blessed today? That's what I just hope that you've been blessed today by the word. Let us continue to be in prayer with and for our pastor um, because this thing called ministry is tiring. It takes a lot out of you when you pour it into the hearts and spirits of people. And so we're praying that God replenishes everything that he's lost and gives him back a double portion, strengthens his wife as she strengthens him and prays for him. And if all else about it, clear, let's get out of here. God, for this day, we thank you. God, we thank you for the word that has been given. God, we thank you for the word carrying this morning at 8 o'clock. God, bless him right now. God, pour out another portion on his life right now in the name of Jesus. God, for everybody under the sound of my weak voice right now, Bless them right there, and ever they stand in need, give it to them. God, give it to them, press down, shake it together, and run it over. God, give it to them so that they're going to have so much increase that they're going to have no but to bless somebody else right now, God. I speak that into your life right now, God. I speak blessings that are going to overtake you by force right now, God. So that when people see you, they're going to see that they do when you're in a ragged situation. And when God you, I declare right now, God, that they're going to see that God put you from the bottom to the top. My God. I speak that right now over your life right now, God. I declare that you're going to have everything that you used to have, and God's going to give you double what you lost. And if you believe it, you ought to say amen. amen. Now unto him. Now unto him. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. My God, exceedingly above, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works within us. To the only wise God, I would say, to be look, your dominion and power, both now and forever. And let the people of God say, Amen. God bless you.